Such a tough matchup. Robinson with the defense. Second steal of the game for Robinson. Park back to Randall. Randall steps into that three and it's good. The New York Knicks are facing a tough decision this season and beyond. The Knicks are off to a slow start offensively, and this has led to discussions in the media, including former players, about whether the team should trade for a star player. So, should the Knicks make a bold move to acquire a high-profile star, or should they stick with the group of young, up-and-coming players who helped them reach the second round of the playoffs last spring? Which would be best for the Knicks? Let's find out. Over the past few years, the New York Knicks have been known for making hasty and often questionable decisions. These decisions have brought chaos to the team, both on and off the basketball court. From the turbulent era of Isaiah Thomas to Donnie Walsh's unexpected resignation, Glenn Grunwald's sudden firing, and even the letting go of promising players like Jeremy Lin, Knicks history has been marked by embarrassing and erratic choices. This pattern extended to giving Phil Jackson significant control, building the team around the triangle offense and making the unconventional decision to have Derek Fisher as a head coach. The draft also witnessed some questionable selections, like Kevin Knox II. Many of the Knicks' issues were caused by their own actions, and those familiar with the NBA can easily identify the root of these problems. However, with James Dolan's focus turning to other matters recently, the team has been on a relatively stable path toward respectability over the past few seasons. This transformation has been led by individuals like Leon Rose, William Wesley, Tom Thibodeau, and Scott Perry, who has already left the team. Despite their perennial struggles, the Knicks managed to astonish the basketball world last season by convincingly defeating the Cleveland Cavaliers in the first round of the NBA playoffs and putting up a brave fight against the Miami Heat in a six-game series. Now, with the hopes of their ever-loyal fans resting on their shoulders, the Knicks face the challenge of taking the next step toward becoming a champion. However, this journey won't be without its difficulties. To achieve that elite status, the Knicks need to secure a bona fide superstar who can lead them out of their prolonged slump and toward the glory of a championship. The bright side, though, is that the Knicks have a youthful team with considerable untapped potential. Many of their rising stars are under 26 years old, suggesting that they have room to grow and improve. But the undeniable truth in the NBA is that championship teams typically have at least one superstar on their roster. Most contenders boast a big three a trio of acknowledged all-stars led by one game-changing player. Before we move on, we know you wouldn't want to miss out on more exclusive content like this, so make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to stay updated with all the latest in the world of the Knicks. While teams like the Warriors with Steph Curry, the Celtics with Jason Tatum, and the Sixers with Joel Embiid showcase their superstar talents, the Knicks currently lack a player of that caliber. As much as Jalen Brunson has shown flashes of brilliance, he can't single-handedly carry the team. So, many fans expected the Knicks to make a significant move this summer, and indeed, that was part of the plan. The team has been conserving draft picks and young players, eagerly awaiting the opportunity to acquire a prime aged star through a trade. They had a chance last summer with Donovan Mitchell, but it slipped away when he was traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Also, this summer, the Knicks did not sign any stars as we all expected. Instead, they appear to be implementing a strategy similar to that of the Philadelphia 76ers. As anticipated, the NBA season began with a trade that shook the league as James Harden moved from the Philadelphia 76ers to the Los Angeles Clippers. In this deal, the Clippers also acquired P.J. Tucker and Philip Petrusiev, while the Sixers received Marcus Morris, Robert Covington, Nick Batoon, K.J. Martin, and multiple draft picks from the Clippers. The decision to make this trade was triggered by the Sixers' strong start to the season, with Tyrese Maxey shining at an all-star level. This put Daryl Morey, the man in charge, in a powerful negotiating position. For James Harden, the trade presented a crucial choice. He needed to excel with the Sixers or reduce his market value significantly by the summer. The Clippers, on the other hand, recognized that if they didn't make a substantial offer, Morey might carry Harden's bird rights into July, leading to uncertainty. 
This realization led the Clippers to offer a fully unprotected first round draft pick, serving as a reasonable compromise. The acquisition of Harden benefits the Clippers during the regular season, especially when stars like Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are expected to miss games, as has been the recent trend. A strong playoff seed might allow Leonard to conserve energy for the later rounds, potentially avoiding injuries like the one that sidelined him in the previous postseason. For the Sixers, this trade is part of a long-term strategy, choosing to invest in young talent like Tyrese Maxey over the 34-year-old Harden was a wise move. Early signs suggest this is a smart decision. Even without a significant acquisition before the trade deadline, the Sixers will have substantial cap space in the upcoming summer to sign or acquire a player through a sign-and-trade, potentially securing Embiid's commitment to a future in Philadelphia. Now the question arises, will the New York Knicks take a similar approach? The Knicks find themselves in a situation similar to where the Clippers and Nets were four years ago. These teams made the most of their plucky, overachieving, yet insufficient rosters, although they were well positioned when Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Howie Leonard, and Paul George became available. The Knicks might choose a different path to address their challenges, possibly opting not to wait for one big star and pursuing alternative strategies. Sports bettors. Your favorite sports book, BetUS.com, is back. Real-time in-game betting, incredible odds with daily odds boosters, props and parlays, fast payouts, and exceptional one-on-one -on -one customer service. We got it all. Who do you like in today's NBA action? Check out the link in the description to receive a 125% bonus match on your deposit when you sign up for BetUS.com, where the game begins. Getting a superstar in the NBA is a challenging feat, often requiring a mix of strategic planning and a touch of luck. The New York Knicks' journey to their current position and their aspirations for the future haven't been straightforward or smooth. Yet, the team's approach exudes confidence rather than desperation with most of their moves reflecting purpose and a commitment to continuity. This steadfastness has been crucial, especially during the turbulent times the Knicks have weathered since 2000. The evolving situation with the Philadelphia 76ers has triggered a clear response from many Knicks fans, stop chasing stars and focus on our affairs. This sentiment is not only reasonable, but perhaps long overdue, the alternative route to team building the multi-year tanking strategy was never seriously considered by the Knicks. It's evident that the team's ownership wouldn't have approved such a path. Leon Rose was appointed as the team's president because his intention was to steer clear of tanking. As a result, each time the team veers away from pursuing a superstar trade, fans tend to advocate for similar alternatives. Some call for a renewed focus on the draft. But given the Knicks' current status as a competitive upper half of the league team, it's challenging to anticipate significant improvements beyond the successful selections of players like Quentin Grimes and Emmanuel Quickly in the later stages of the first round. Reflecting on past decisions, such as trading away draft picks that could have landed promising prospects such as Jalen Williams or Jalen Duran, is worth considering. However, these choices may not have dramatically changed the team's prospects if their ultimate goal is to contend for championships. Another option fans mention is to embrace the current core of players and make incremental improvements around it. This path could become the preferred approach, particularly if no other viable alternatives emerge. An intriguing alternative is for the Knicks to gradually enhance their roster with non-superstar talent. However, achieving this can be a formidable task as the competitive landscape for talent in the NBA results in role players commanding substantial salaries. Meaningful improvements might require a core restructuring or even starting from scratch. So, how do the Knicks go about their recruiting process? Scott Perry shared some valuable insights about this during his appearance on the Hoop Genius podcast. The Knicks front office have been unusually quiet for some years, making his recent comments significant. Talking about Donovan Mitchell, Perry explained that the Knicks face the pivotal question of whether relinquishing their emerging young talents and valuable draft assets for his acquisition would prove to be a prudent, long-term move. The organization made diligent efforts to secure Mitchell, but always with a commitment to a fair and equitable deal. 
Through their evaluations, it became clear that Mitchell's success depended on additional support to guide his team to the conference finals. These evaluations aren't easy, but this shows that the team believes in building a team with depth, even in the absence of high-profile superstars. It's essential to recognize that while having a superstar of Giannis's caliber would undoubtedly be advantageous, it's not the exclusive pathway to achieving success. In essence, this unveils the behind-the-scenes decisions and strategies that have both shaped and continue to influence the Knicks' quest for top-tier talent. The core principle is to maintain a delicate equilibrium between pursuing star players and patiently nurturing their existing resources. The waiting period may feel challenging, but the Knicks can find comfort in being a competitive team at present. Based on past experiences, this is not something to be taken for granted. However, right now, it's realistic to acknowledge that the Knicks may not surpass teams like the Celtics or Bucks, and the Eastern Conference landscape remains a competitive battleground. We can debate reasons to place New York in a tier above teams like the Cavaliers, Heat, Sixers, Hawks, Nets, Bulls, or Raptors, while the Magic and Pacers also pose credible threats. However, even if the Knicks fail to advance further in the playoffs compared to last season, this year's results matter less than the unwavering commitment to stability and the type of enduring underdog spirit that will resonate with a star player on the hunt to complete the Knicks puzzle, if and when that finally comes to fruition. Unless we see some exceptional performances, the Knicks might find themselves maintaining their position as a mid-tier contender. Competence and professionalism on their own have their limits. Regardless of the chosen path, inherent risks come with each decision. Nevertheless, given the Knicks' history as one of the most turbulent franchises in America, they have every reason to be enthusiastic about their current standing and optimistic about their future potential. What's your thoughts about what the Knicks' strategy should be? Will it be effective in them winning a championship in years to come? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. That will be all for today's video. Thanks for staying tuned. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you can always watch more amazing videos like this. See you in the next video.